Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. We are glad to have you joining us from your kitchen, your living room, um, from wherever you are to worship with us this morning. Um, just a couple of announcements. We will continue to be here. Yes, it is true that that businesses are starting to reopen, but here at First Presbyterian Church, we're gonna take a little bit more of a wait and see attitude, and so you can continue to find us on Sunday morning right here on YouTube and Facebook, and we will look forward to having you with us. Um, I'm here again this morning with Noel Martins behind the camera and Tim uh, Woods and Belinda Weller here helping us out with music. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. shepherd across the ages, as we traverse rocky paths, serene meadows, and stormy waters, you are our constant companion, protecting us from harm and guiding our steps. Your goodness and mercy pursue us. Your love overflows our cups. To you we offer our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. Amen. Let us sing with joy, Christ is risen, shout Hosanna.
Will you join me in prayer? Loving God, as your word is read and proclaimed, open our ears to hear, open our eyes to see, and open our hearts to receive that which you have for us today. For we pray in the name of Jesus, the Christ. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes to us from the 23rd Psalm. And this is one of the most popular of texts that we use in worship on many different occasions, but always on the occasion of the fourth Sunday of Eastertide, which we call Good Shepherd Sunday. So listen to these words from King David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Now, you have been probably following the news and the headlines and realizing that many of our states across the country um, have said that students are home for the rest of the school year. And so they will complete their schoolwork with teachers via Zoom and Google Classroom. And so I thought, here on Sunday morning, what better time for a lesson than a grammar lesson? Yes, friends, I want to talk to you about verbs. Verbs are what? They're words of action. Doing, being, going, making, creating, reacting. Verbs are what get us from here to there. Verbs are what let us help one another get from here to there. Verbs tell us when we are going. Verbs let us know when we are coming. Verbs are the action to everything that we do. So I want you to spend some time, and we're going to do it right now, but then maybe later in the week, come back and revisit this idea. Because in the psalm, the primary doer of the action is the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, and because of that, I lack nothing. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. The Lord leads me beside the still waters. The Lord restores my soul. The Lord leads me in the paths of righteousness. And even when I'm in the darkest valley, you, O oh Lord, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Not because of anything that I do, but because of what God does to make that cup overflow. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life. And again, God is the doer of the action sending goodness and mercy to follow us 
And the language in the Hebrew, it's really important to understand that these are not simply meandering, following verbs. These are Dukes of Hazard, Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, hot pursuit verb tense. It is the intensive form of the verb. So God's goodness and mercy are in hot pursuit of us all of the days of our lives. And because of that, we dwell in the house of the Lord. Spend some time thinking about these verbs. I always say in funerals and in other services, but because we use this text so often, and so often in a worship service, we have an affirmation of faith that declares what we believe about God. Here in this congregation, we very often use the Apostles' Creed. But today, after the sermon, we will use these words from the 23rd Psalm to declare our faith about who God is for us, our shepherd. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of your love, that it pursues us and dogs us, that we could never escape it. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you are our shepherd guiding us and providing for us. And we give you thanks for those gifts and provision. We ask, O oh God, that you would continue to guide us even in these dark days of separation and isolation. Let us not fear because we know that you are with us and that is a comfort. Amen.
from the Gospel of John. Chapter 10, starting at verse 7. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Historically, we have understood the shepherd and the work of the shepherd is to tend and keep the sheep. But culturally, back in Jesus' day, shepherds were a little bit of a sketchy group. They were often nomadic because they would travel with their herds to the pasture lands, and when they came into town, people would give them wide berth because they weren't always the most honest of individuals. Shepherds themselves had kind of a lousy reputation. But Jesus puts himself alongside that stereotypical shepherd that nobody trusts, that people are suspicious of, and he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. We all of us struggle with stereotypes even in scripture, as people talk about Jesus of Nazareth, can any good come from Nazareth? Well, yes. The Savior of the world himself is from Nazareth, so they can't be all bad, right? Same goes for shepherds, even though many of them are shady characters, historically. Just like in every other situation in the world, and with every rule in the world, there are always those handful of exceptions. Jesus claims himself to be a shepherd, and not just any old shepherd, but the good 
shepherd. The one, the only, the good shepherd. And the good shepherd does these things. He lays down his life for his sheep. He goes and he seeks out the lost when they've been scattered. He is the one that cares. He talks about those shepherds who have come before are thieves and bandits. So he gives a nod to that stereotypical understanding. And then he says, but I am the good shepherd. And the sheep have an innate sense to understand and know the voice of the shepherd and follow that voice and not the voices of the bandits and thieves who seek to cause them harm. The good shepherd fights for his sheep, indeed laying down his life so that he can protect them and save them from danger. The wolves come in an effort to scatter the sheep and separate one or two from the herd so that they can have a nice lamb dinner. But the good shepherd goes after the wolf with his staff. He uses it as a weapon to either frighten away the wolf or fend off his attack. And you know that shepherd's crook, the hook at the top, is not just there as a nice walking stick, but also if a lamb gets stuck in a brush, he can reach and pull it up and out if it's on a rocky area that's hard to reach. The shepherd has his tools and uses them to protect his sheep, and he lays down his life willingly in order to protect and save the flock. The good shepherd lays down his life, and this shepherd, our Jesus, also has the power to take his life back up. It is a foreshadowing of his death, but always with the assurance that death will not have the last word. My sheep know my voice, and they follow me. And then he says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So who we are among this fold of sheep, there's always room for another to join. The Good Shepherd is always out in the world calling his sheep to come. This is the invitation that is extended for discipleship in Jesus Christ, even for the one who is most reluctant. The Good Shepherd continues to offer that invitation and make the effort to bring those sheep into the fold. It is always his intention that we would be one flock. And then he says these words, I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. I think the Gospel of John puts a lot of language into Jesus' words. 
that always leaves us scratching our head just a little bit. And here Jesus spends three years living and working and praying and teaching and healing with his disciples. And each day he tries to give them a little bit more information. I lay down my life and I have the power to pick it back up again. And still the disciples scratch their heads. What does that mean? I don't know about you, but for me personally, I still scratch my head and I know what it means. But I also am looking for it in the world. How is this manifesting in the world that Jesus lays down his life and death happens and yet life is raised back up and something new comes from it? I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The sheep hear the shepherd's voice and know him and follow him. Friends, we know the good shepherd. And he calls us by name, claims us, redeems us, loves us. And because he laid down his life, and because death did not have the last word, and he was able to take it back up again, we have nothing to fear in those dark valleys, for Christ is with us. Amen. I invite you to go back to your order of worship, and let us affirm our faith together reading the 23rd Psalm as it is presented, or in the language or tradition that is most comfortable for you, because many of us memorized these words growing up. Let us declare what we believe. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. shepherd calls us by name to follow him. We are invited always 
and never turned away to follow the Good Shepherd. So offer yourselves, offer your gifts, and follow him. Let us turn our hearts and minds to God in prayer. Loving God, creator and sustainer of all that is and all that has been and all that is yet to be, we give you thanks and praise for your glorious creation, for the gifts that you give of knowledge and wisdom and courage and innovation and discovery. Lord, continue to grant your gifts, bestow upon us knowledge, wisdom, care and compassion, and above all, O oh God, grant us your grace. Not just grace unto us, but grace that we can share with the world. We confess, O oh God, that we fall short of the mark of perfection as we understand it. Help us, O oh God, to come to you penitently, asking forgiveness of our sins and seeking guidance to live our lives in love and compassion and grace and service to the world and to your people. We give you thanks and praise, O oh God, for those who are serving on the front lines in this medical pandemic for first responders, doctors, nurses, techs, aides, housekeepers, food service. For those, O oh God, who put their lives on the line to care for your sheep, we give you thanks and praise. For those who are in leadership around the world, O oh God, grant your wisdom and courage to work in service to their constituencies, to their countries, to their states, and to their communities, O oh God. We pray for your church, that it can continue to be a beacon of light and hope, serving as the hands and feet and heart of the risen Christ, sent to redeem and save the world for the gifts of those who offer themselves as leaders, as mask makers, as risk takers, as carers for others. We rejoice in the gifts that you have bestowed, O oh God, and ask that your goodness and mercy would continue to pursue us and that in that spirit we would pursue opportunities to seek out the lost, to minister to them, to offer words of healing and hope, of care and compassion. We are indeed your sheep, O oh God, and we follow the Good Shepherd who laid down his life for us. We offer our prayers using the words that he taught his disciples, and we pray with the boldness of children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We will sing together, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need. Let us sing our closing hymn. Thank you. 
the shepherd, the good shepherd, supplies our needs. There is nothing to fear. So stay home, wash your hands, and know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit are with us now and always. Alleluia. Amen.